most people would say they know you uh, as Billy Idol's right hand man. You are the guitar player for so many years behind so many great songs, so many great albums with Billy Idol. But when I started going down that rabbit hole, I, I started realizing one thing, Steve. You have dealt with some very huge personalities over the year. And that, I, think that's, I, I think a lot of people don't understand that how important to be a working musician, to be a, a right-hand guy of someone. You, you need to deal with some really big personalities. That's a good way of saying it, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But like, 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 I go down the list and I just name a few. It's like from all shapes and sizes, literally. Billy Idol, Michael Jackson, Vince Neil, Sebastian Bach, Adam Bond. I mean, these are and and the one thing that I was most amazed to find out. And tell me if this is true or not. There was a, a Japanese artist that was named is named. Uh, I'm a, I know I'm going to say it wrong. I'm going to uh, Kisoruki Humero. Yeah, hum Humero. Yeah, H Humero. You yeah. made more albums with him, or contributed more albums than him than any of the others. Um, is that true? Well, I yeah. They. I mean, there's a lot of like repackages. I I essentially did three albums with him, right. and during the '90s, I was in Japan for three months out of the year with an all Japanese band. So I was the only gaijin on. <laughs> on but it was an incredible experience. If if anyone has ever seen. Lost in translation. That was my life. You were and, Bill Murray. Uh, <laughs> I was. I was Bill Murray. I mean, it was incredible. I mean, the the craziest things would happen. Um, I remember. This is before uh, Iron Chef was was seen on uh, on US TV, and uh, it was on a cable channel, and um, the uh, uh, it was called Kitchen Stadium. And I mentioned to somebody that I knew the show. Well, I eventually ended up on the show in Japan, which was <laughs> kind of, and I didn't know, you know, we, we went to the show and I thought, I said, oh, I'll be in the audience. Oh, there's no audience. You are on Kitchen Stadium. <laughs> and there's, a, the there's a fraction, kind of like uh, on, on, you know, kind of like this podcast, you know, and, you, uh, you know you're, you're the main guy right now, you know? No, it, and, and, and it's like they, they show, they go to me at one point and they say, oh, it's all in Japanese, you know, visiting dignitary. So, and that guy says, stand up. And I go, and I look like a deer caught in the headlights. I'm just like, you know, <laughs> this is too you, surreal. You were already pretty well known in Japan as uh, not just a solo artist, but you also have been known for years with, with, with Billy Idol. Sure. And uh, I think for me, one of the coolest trios was uh, you, Billy Idol, Keith Forsey behind the desk as right, a producer. Yeah. Now, is that relationship still going strong? Have you guys worked together before or currently? Um, well, Keith is retired down to uh, Mexico. He actually, he and his girlfriend have a hotel down there. Um, nice. Yeah, Keith has always been really into boats and uh, sailboats and power boats. And he, he moved down there and is living an incredible life. And I'm very <laughs> jealous right now. <laughs> he, well, maybe he got it right before all of us, right? Before yeah. it all shut down. They're but he really, you, you, you're right. Keith was, was really the, the, uh, the, the other, the other member of the band really right from the get go. And I, I owe so much to Keith because I was really, uh, you know, hadn't really properly recorded in the studio or anything when we did, uh, Billy's first album. And, um, and there was a lot of times where I didn't know how to get a guitar sound or something. And, and uh, Keith could easily got a session guy in there to do it. And he was patient with me and said, no, you know, um, well, you're Billy's guitar player. And this is, we're going to work on this. He certainly hammered out one of the best guitar tones that I've been trying to recreate for so many years. I know you always uh, have a couple tricks up your sleeve. You were, you were one of the first guys that I ever uh, met that had done some echo effects like special echo effects there was some ones that were unique just to you you were one of the first guys i remember and i don't know if this is a dark thing to bring up or if it's cool the roland g700 remember right that you, yeah. you yeah. played that and yeah. but all in all it was like i would all you were the sort of guitar player of my choice because and i say this in interviews always i i say you are proficient enough to outshred anybody, but you understand the song first and foremost. 
and you're obviously rock and roll blues based. And that right. makes for such a good all encompassing guitarist, I think. And you talk about, and you concentrate on the parts, the right. parts, right. you know? Uh, yeah. And I think you, you, you like myself, we love a good song. Yep. You know, it's a solo is great, but you know, the power of a good song uh, and working with, you know, obviously you, how, how many years have you been with Alice now? On and off since uh, with Alice, I think since puberty, or at least since <laughs> at least since the fact that I felt. I mean, I I, I don't even know. I'm, I'm still going through puberty. I think at one point, but <laughs> we uh, all are. yeah, it is. It, we're lucky to do what we get to do, no doubt. But the, yeah, I've been with Alice off and on for over 20 years, and and yeah. we have that relationship. And and the the cool thing for me is I get to play a bunch of different great. Uh, lineups over the years whether it's the original lineup or right. all through the years now i'm trying to think have you and alice ever recorded together no i've only met him once um wow. and yeah i don't but, know how uh, he let you slip by he because he loves i mean whenever i talk whenever i bring steve stevens up he says yeah that's my guy i like that oh yeah i mean um you know but 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 we probably uh you're a bit younger than me but we the great Not thing much. about rock and <laughs> yeah, but the great thing about rock and roll is there's all these records that we can go back on, like 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 walking into a library of sonic, you know, wow. bliss, and I think we probably listen to a lot of the same stuff. A lot of the the you know, for me it was always uh, English rock from '69 to '73. Anything in that era, whatever it was, I was devouring it. There was a, a radio show. Uh, on WNEW in New York during those years called Things from England every Friday. And literally, I would buy everything they played during that show. And it was all, you know, whether it was Glam, Sweet, or Slade, Sweet, or course, that, yeah. or, or, or some of the, you know, they premiere their early, you know, whatever Led Zeppelin record was coming out, or even some of the cooler progressive rock bands that were happening. I just devoured all of that stuff. And, um, and when it, you know, e even though Billy Idol and I, grew up, uh, you know, an ocean apart. We grew up a lot of, on the same music, although, you know, punk rock was an, a, a kind of a, a blowback to a lot of the excesses of that stuff. But when we started to talk about music, we had the same record collection. I think so Billy Idol's kind of attitude and your sort of depth and knowledge of, of rock and roll, classic rock blended perfectly. Because I mean, like I said, when you talk about those old albums, you can go back and reference uh, first Billy Idol album, Rebel Yell, of course, uh, Whiplash Smile. All these albums for me were, were great blueprints of how to write great parts for songs. Because I've always said that I'm a, I'm a big parts guy. And and right. if, I, if I could name my top five, I'd say Brian May, probably top yeah. at writing amazing guitar parts and solos yeah, that complement the song. Genius. Yeah, yeah, genius. Other guys, though, that might fly under the radar a little bit would be Neil Giraldo from the Pat Benatar Band. <laughs> yeah, great. Just one of those great, great guys, parts guys. Yeah. And Elliot Easton from the Cars. Oh, absolutely. Do, do you have any of those guys that are, are yeah, like that? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think the thing is, you know, for, uh, uh, you know, if you if you work with a singer or as as I've had the, the, the fortune to work with many great singers, uh, if you're a fan of them, you want to support what it is they're trying to do. And I remember whenever I'd, you know, go in and do a session or something with somebody, I'd always go, you know, what's the lyric? And they'd be like, well, you're the guitar player. And I go, yeah, but I have to at least know what it is you're trying to convey so I can kind of put that in the stew somehow. Um, because, you know, that's, you know, I, I, I want to support a great song. And, you know, the solo is great and it's a nice little deviation of that. But I don't live for the solo. You know, um, well, that's I live for the, the, for the riff. <laughs> you definitely you know? made a name for yourself with the soloing on like the soundtracks, the movie soundtracks. Because I want to be, well, before I get into just, just the movie soundtracks, I want to just ask one or two things about uh, the other lead singers that you've worked with. Because obviously Billy Idol's uh, the most well-known partnership that you guys have had. But you've also uh, guested on Michael Jackson. With Michael right. Jackson, and, and yeah. there is a little story that I was sent, uh, a little question. Con I don't know if it's a uh, um, sort of a controversy or just sort of a uh, conspiracy theory, but you, I need to clear it up because, or, or for this guy, he said that uh, you, you played on Dirty Diana, but right, and was there also Smooth Criminal as well? No. Okay, so not Smooth Criminal. Yes, Dirty Diana, and 
there was some sort of rumor that you had met Eddie Van Halen and he had said that he never got paid for Beat It. Is um, that true? Well, I, yeah, I mean, I knew Ed before I, I did the Michael Jackson thing. Yeah. And, um, and the connection was I was signed to, to Warner's by uh, Ted Templeman. Oh, wow. And, and um, so Quincy, the story I got was that Quincy Jones called up Ted. And this is, you know, they're working on the follow up after, uh, you know, the, the you know, which uh, one was it? Beat it. Yeah, so, yeah. so it's, I'm on the bad record. So this is after Thriller, and um, and you know, obviously, Beat It was such a huge success. And so Quincy calls up Ted and goes, "We got another rack track, and we need a guitar player. Obviously, we can't do it with Eddie again. We, who who do you suggest?" And Ted graciously uh, suggested me. We had been meeting and had become friends and would hang out and listen to record. Ted Ted is one of the coolest record people that I have ever met and uh, he suggested me so I got a call from Quincy and um, I came out to uh to LA to do the the track um I didn't really know what do you charge so I called dad up and I said what did you charge and he said man I I didn't charge anything you know Dave's mad at me but you know man I can't <laughs> you can't put a price tag on it he says you know I didn't write the song uh, I, you know, I played the solo on it and, you know, and <clears throat> so that's what I did. I didn't charge for it. I didn't feel, you know, I'm not a writer on it. And the, the, what it did for my career was worth more than any money. It, I could yeah. It just for. blossomed everything. Now I'm not sure yeah. of that. Did that open up the door for the Top Gun or was that after or was it was around the same time? Um, Cause there's a lot of years in there where you're it was, just... okay. It was after and, and man, I always tell people, you know, ne you never know. Say yes to everything. <laughs> so, so the way Top Gun came down was um, Keith Forsey's buddy, who you, who we used to make records with uh, for Donna Summers, was Harold Faltermeyer. So on Whiplash Smile, Harold came in to do the keyboards, and we're working about the third day in, and he says, um, "I'm working on this movie, Top Gun. Uh, uh, let me show you a clip." And this is the days of you know Betamax, you know. Of course, puts, yeah. There, put, there, there's puts no the files. video in. Yeah, hey, yeah. <laughs> puts the video in, and I, I go, I think I recognize that guy. Yes, uh, Tom Cruise from uh, Risky Business. Okay, uh, and then he shows me the, okay. the aerial aerial <laughs> footage, which now you look at it, kind of looks like a little mini plane on the stick but i think you can make i think you make a bigger movie with your iphone these days yeah yeah i mean back then it was like wow look at that <laughs> you know? so um i said yeah you know he says we've got this theme and da -da -da, would you like to do it absolutely so i was already set up in the studio we were already tracking so you uh, just came oh, so it was just a, another session you know, for you yeah uh, at the end of the idol session one day uh, take the tapes put put it another reel on the machine and i think the whole thing took maybe two and a half hours Amazing. and then oh. yeah now and, the, uh, now they're making a remake of right. uh top gun have you been uh, has anyone reached out to you for that or do you think that's um, going to get all political? yeah um i met with harold in in munich when we were there and um he's they've brought him back uh in addition to uh hans zimmer to do the soundtrack and from what i understand they are using the original uh, theme for the for the film by, might be remixed or whatever. And I'm, I'm really glad about that because I wouldn't have wanted to re try and recreate something that, you know, was done, what, 35 years ago and we, we won a Grammy for it. It's yeah. such a, I don't want to touch that, you know? I no. mean, it's, it's like- Sometimes it's, it's, it's hard, like there's certain things you can't cover. You, it's, it's hard to cover a Beatles song because who's right. going to do it better yeah. than the Beatles and True. maybe a soundtrack that won you and <laughs> you know an yeah. Oscar so I, I mean it, yeah it'd be so so I'm more, more than happy that they're actually using the original some in some context I don't know exactly how N not a lot of people know uh but you also did music for the movie Speed right around the same time Sandra Bullock right <laughs> We did, yeah, nice. we did. Billy and I did the the title track for Speed, yeah. I love it, love it, yeah. man. Hello folks, Roxy here. Thanks for watching the video. And if you liked it, hit the subscribe button or one of the videos around me to watch more. If you'd like to, please leave a comment. If you didn't like the video, maybe you'll forget how to type. <laughs>